Hello, everybody, and welcome to Change Now, the lar largest event for the planet. My name is Amy Mehus, and I'm your moderator here in the Pitch Garden. And this session is dedicated to inclusion with MasterCard, and we have some exciting change makers with us here today. So, to give us a quick introduction to the theme, we have Alexandra Sana from MasterCard. Alexandra, I'm going to hand it over to you. Hello, thank you very much. We, we, MasterCard, we are delighted to be the partner of this uh, uh, inclusion pitch session. Uh, and as an introduction, I would like to say a few words about what is our vision of inclusion. Um, because we are a worldwide technological company in the payment industry, but we are, we are also driven by financial inclusion. And why? Because doing well by doing good is part of, of our DNA. Uh, indeed, uh, at MasterCard, our network is really the foundation of our business. Uh, and it's how we operate to make the payments possible everywhere in the world. And we want to also allow payments uh, for everyone. And that's why our network is really the, the way we make inclusion a reality to allow uh, all the people in an organization to access to the digital economy. And that's why we have committed to uh, financially include 1 billion people by 2025 by connecting them to the digital economy uh, through the use of public-private partnerships with banks, associations, uh, and, and the private sector, and we already achieved the first objective of 500 million. To give you some concrete examples of, on, on what are our initiatives on inclusion, I would like to, uh, to present you the initiatives that we have in France. We have defined the local ambition to reach 5 million people financially included by 2025, uh, to help them get out of economic insecurity. And we have built three inclusive programs uh, relying on education and awareness. And so why education? Because we think that inclusion starts with education to, to fight, um, to, to, to prevent future insecurity and to, to tackle the issue at the origin with education. And the three programs we, we built um, aimed at uh, offering more inclusion and more equality on three main dimensions. So the first one is financial education, the second one is employment, and the third one is allowing a better gender equality in tech jobs. So the first one, uh, we designed a digital program with uh, our partner Cresus, a French association. It's a game that enables uh, everyone to learn how to manage its own budget, so to allow financial education to prevent over indebtedness. The second initiative is an initiative about future of work, so we built it uh, with the, the, the association Bias Impact, and it's a digital uh, learning program that is using artificial intelligence to provide personalized uh, career uh, coaching and advice to job seekers and, and, and to also to deliver some job opportunities to, to job seekers. And the last one uh, is a program aimed at reducing gender discrimination in tech jobs. We designed it with our partner Arkea and with uh, the association Tres Academia. And so it's a digital education program with the objective to uh, make 500k young women more familiar with the tech, uh, with tech jobs by 2025. So I would like now maybe to share some uh, some insights and some advice with the, the, the startups that are going to pitch their uh, their solutions. Uh, so our experience in inclusion make us think that there are several key success factors when we uh, we, we launch projects in inclusion. So we believe that the, the, the dimensions that are key are first the, the partnership dimension, so the fact the, to be able to bring different expertise and to combine different partners in a collab collaborative approach. And so we at MasterCard, uh, we, we worked with our banks as dis distribution partners. We are working with associations that bring the expertise and the content uh, on inclusion. And we, MasterCard, we bring the, the financial resources and, and the scale of our network. We also think that digital is key because digital brings the scale to inclusion projects. Of course, innovation is a key uh, is a key element uh, to, to bring uh, so agility and innovation to, to bring value to the 
to, 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 the, to the market. And that education, again, uh, is a key aspect to, to consider to tackle the issue at the origin. Um, and, I, and I would like to conclude uh, to, to wish best of luck to the, to the startups that are going to pitch now. Thank you very much. Wonderful, Alexandra. Thank you so much. We have a lot of exciting pictures to cover uh, and we're going to dig into that in a moment. But first, we also want to introduce our wonderful panel. So I'm going to give the word one by one and everybody going to get about 30 seconds to introduce themselves. And I'm going to start with Ryan Gisarba. Over to you, Ryan. Good evening from the Philippines. My name is Ryan. I'm an Ashoka Fellow and founder of Virtuanhen, an impact-driven company that equips persons with disabilities, recovering drug addicts, and other excluded communities with skills and mindset to work in the digital economy while helping organizations like UN agencies and Microsoft implement their diversity and inclusion initiatives, all working together to build a future of work that lives on the Fantastic. Thank you, Ryan. And then over to Daniel Blake. Hi, yes, this is Daniel. Um, I'm at University Impact and we are an early stage impact investment fund uh, that's focused on uh, helping to bring more capital to the, the pioneer gap. Thank you, Daniel. And then over to Adriana Freitas. Hi, uh, thank you, Ingrid, and, and uh, thank you, Alessandra, for the initiative on putting this panel together. Uh, my name is Adriana Freitas. I am in Barcelona. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm the GP from like a, a, an impact pre-seed fund uh, that invests in European startups, uh, what we call like solving uh, critical problems. Uh, we, we have an ecosystem of experts to work with us. We, we invest in sustainability, education, healthcare, and what is called social tech, where, where we see this, this type of uh, startup that we're going to see today. Uh, we target Europe with the focus on Spain and Portugal. And uh, we, we are, again, we are in the pre-seed and seed stage. Uh, any startups that want to come to the market of Spain or are interested, like, uh, please contact me. And uh, success for all the startups uh, pitching today. Fantastic, thank you. And we have Judith Laura Mamu Mani. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm an impact fund manager. I work uh, for the um, impact fund of MAIF. MAIF is a major uh, French insurance company that has adopted uh, the French legal framework as Entreprise à Mission, uh, which is a um, mission driven company. Um, the Impact Fund um, invests in seed and serie um, rounds. We focus on companies that are dedicated to tackle the most pressing social and environmental challenges. Um, and we focus on companies that can prove uh, this measure social impact. Uh, we target France so far um, and uh, maybe uh, Europe if you have projects in Europe. And we invest in, uh, in many activities, uh, but mainly in education and um, a secure economy and uh, everything that has a very strong impact. And I'm very happy to, to be with you today. Fantastic. Thank you so much. All right. I think we're ready to get inspired. So let's dig into the pitches. We're going to start with Adam Boudouin, who comes from a lesson of. Adam, I'm going to hand it over to you. Hi everyone, um, I'm just assuming you can see my pitch deck, I'm not sure. It comes um, up in a second. Great, I'll just... Yeah. Um, yeah, so I guess I can start briefly on the intro. So hi, I'm Adam, I'm in Berlin right now, and I'm the CEO of Lasan. Uh, Lasan uh, translate the web for the next billion internet users, um, as you can see right there. Um, and let's get into it. Mm. Yeah, so right now, 1 billion people in the fastest growing economies around the world do not have an instant translation tool that works for them. So that means that web content, which is more majority in English, they can't really consume because there's no good quality instant translation tool that allows them to, you know, read that content in a, their native language. It's a big problem across uh, Africa, India, and Southeast Asia, um, and that's what my company is based around. 
uh, five, and all the growth in the internet is coming from these regions. So five out of six new internet users are coming from places outside North America and Europe. And it's just like the most exciting economies that will, for the next 50 years will probably be outside of these regions in terms of you know, growth and new internet users. And it's really important that the internet works for them as well. So the way to typically solve this problem is deep, through deep learning. So you build these very large data sets of translations for French and English, for example, with matching translations in either language. And it has to be over a million sentences long to, to run models that are accurate enough to create good translations automatically. For many of these languages, that's not possible. Uh, and so there's no instant translation that works. We came up with a way to solve this problem, built a really large data set of translations for our first two languages, and have 9.7 tra million translations completed so far for thousands of users in our first market, market which is in Ethiopia. And that's just how many unique users you have. And this is what it kind of looks like. It's just a text box that you can translate right in text. It automatically connects to your language and translates it over to the target language. And our users come from all over the world, mainly in Ethiopia, but we have thousands of users all over because there's lots of immigrants or even people that are interested in what's happening in Ethiopia that mainly speak English and want to understand Amharic or Tigrinya, which are our first two languages. We want to do the same translation pipeline that we built for Ethiopia for other languages in Nigeria, South Africa, and in India and other regions as well, opening up the web to 500 million people. Our business model is a document translation service that we run for clients like Dahlberg and McKinsey. And we also have an API that developers use to build applications on top of our, our system. So we think there's a really, really large opportunity to be the gateway to the web for these regions. These are just some stats around how much money different browsers make off, off their users. And we think Africa and other regions like this that are really multilingual are the next kind of frontier. The team that built this is Asme. He's from Ethiopia, and he's a PhD in machine learning, and he's an expert in this field. And me, I used to have a startup, and now I work on this after doing some work in international development. This is the plan for the next six months. So launch the, we've already launched the API for Tigrinya. Um, we're raising investment funds right now, and we want to continue to grow this um, to other languages as well, uh, eventually expanding to other countries. So that was pretty quick, but that's my pitch. Uh, we're fundraising, uh, I guess, our seed round right now. Um, and if you're interested in that, feel free to get in touch. Thanks a lot. Fantastic, Adam. The power of language both include and exclude should not be underestimated. So what a wonderful presentation and solution that you have offered. And talking about languages, um, I'm now going to introduce Benoit Floquet. And I do hope I'm able to pronounce your company properly. I'm going to give it a try. Tyler's Davinir. Is that correct? Please correct me, Bernard, if it's uh, the right or the wrong way. Yes, it's quite complicated because it's in French, and in French we say tirolier d'avenir. Perfect. See, perfect. The expert has to say it. The floor is yours. All right. Thank you. So I'm uh, Benoit, the co-founder of Tirolier d'avenir, which is like a piggy bank for the future. Uh, we aim at helping young adults who suffer from uh, a lack of family support and who might end up in the street. Um, so to begin with, uh, we have to know that in order to help people and young adults who suffer from family uh, lack of family support, there are four main uh, aspects. The accommodation, the social accompaniment to help them with uh, the administrative task and uh, how they can find their way in the social and the work world. And we have also two uh, main aspect which is financial support and also the inclusive social connection that is to say connect with other young people. The main issue today in France is that uh, the charities that are already existed they only tackle the two main issues and so when you are a young adult you suffer from a lack of financial support and also a lack of uh, social bonding. That's why at Tirolier d'Avenir, we created a partnership with other charities who offer the accommodation and the social support. And we give to uh, the young adults we help 
a financial support which is unconditional and which is tailor-made, that is, we answer the need of uh, the young adults. We also offer uh, to create pairs of young people in order to discover new adults and also a lot of different experiences. Today we have helped 50 uh, people and the impact is quite big because we can see that uh, for 80% uh, of the young adults, they, uh, the exit is on a revenue uh, way, so that is to say they, ha they have found a job or they have found another social aid. How do we fund all of this? We have three main channels. Uh, we put some micro donations uh, in uh, small shops. We have also uh, the ability to raise money on uh, our digital uh, networks. And the last one is uh, through partnership with corporation. We have a lot of partnership and the one, the major one is with Lydia, a new bank, which enables us to give a card and a bank account to our young adults, which are not eligible for a bank account in the traditional uh, system. We have five in the team. Louis, my co-founder, and uh, Lea, who is a social worker who previously worked on uh, an, uh, another charity, and we have two intern with us. And the idea for this year is to help 100 young adults and also to start supporting people who are, all, uh, who are still in the street and to help them get out of the street. Thank you very much. You can follow us on the link, on the, the, the media. And also, uh, if you, you want to, to build partnership, I will be glad to speak with you after this. Beautiful, Benoit. Thank you so much. I think what's lingering with me now, it is quite visual, is an unconditional piggyback. Very, very powerful. Okay, we're going to now go to Leslie Cousin from Double Impact. Leslie, the floor is yours. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm very pleased to be uh, with you. I'm very happy to be with you uh, today um, because you know what? Uh, yeah, together we have a better impact. My name is Leslie, and uh, in 2018, I was living in Sydney. I was looking for meaning in my life, and I wanted to have a real positive impact in the community and for the planet. My twin sister, reporter, was living in Brussels, and we decided to meet in Nepal for a humanitarian trek in Himalayas. And as we say, the journey is more important than the destination. On the way, we met amazing people doing their best to offer us a better future, a more sustainable world. We have collected beautiful stories that deeply touch us. There, we spoke with different nonprofit organizations, and we just realized that there are millions of non-profit organizations. They need to have more visibility. They need more visibility to obtain the resources required for a better impact. And at the same time, we are billions of citizens with the need of meanings in our action. There is a real awareness of the importance and the urgency to act for a more responsible world. But still, too many of us don't know how to do it. Double impact. Um, Hence, to be an inclusive platform that will help nonprofit organizations to increase their visibility and consequently their impact. How does it work? Non for profits will register their call for projects, can be photos, podcasts, videos, very powerful media. And the platform will match these needs with the needs of companies which wish to mobilize their collaborators around corporate social responsibility, sustainable development goals, and who will be able to provide support to non for profits Double Impact will work with various local partners to bring visibility. It can be schools, videographers, photographers, media, institutions, etc. And later, the idea is to become a platform for everybody. Because we will be touched by emotion, Double Impact will help us to take action. Double Impact has received recognition, highlighting the fact that we need Double Impact. And guess what? 
at this pre-prototype phase, we definitely need you. Imagine. Imagine. Yeah, imagine. Imagine all the people. Imagine yourself engaging alongside the heroes who change the world. Playing your part has never been so exciting. This is not Disney. These are true stories. An inspiring community of impactors is being formed to build an inspiring future. Support Double Impact, together for real stories of change, to make the world a better and happier place have after. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Leslie, for that beautiful presentation and transporting us across the world through your words and through your imagery. That was absolutely stunning. Thank you. All right, we have our final presenter. It's Moneva Motwa from Young Aspiring Thinkers. Moneva, I'm going to hand it over to you. Hi, everyone. Hope you are. Um, my name is Moneva, coming all the way from South Africa. Um, it's really, really nice to be on this call. Um, so I represent Young Aspiring Thinkers. Um, I'd like to call this journey, you know, the journey of confusion. Um, growing up, I wanted to be a policeman. From being a policeman, I wanted to be a doctor. From being a doctor, I wanted to be a lawyer. And I'm currently working as a brewer. So we've gone from law enforcement to making beer, and it's quite the transition. And some of those confusing uh, journeys is what we're really trying to work on with young learners in high schools, connecting bright young minds to new careers that are out there. So what we do at YET, um, we really focus on career exposure through a cool element, through the 30 seconds approach, which is a cool board game that looks at the different careers on a card and how we can then play that board game to remind learners of what the new careers are out there. We then funnel learners into a Illuminate program, which focuses on four aspects, which is the self-discovery aspect. Um, it then moves over, over to career design. Once the career design phase is done, we move into an SDG impact project. We're really passionate about the UN Sustainable Goals. And one that is close to our heart is um, UN number eight, um, which is quality education, uh, decent work, and economic growth. And we're really trying to fix the ideas of youth unemployment in the country. Currently, youth unemployment is sitting at about 50% in the country, and we're trying to allow learners to have more options from a career choice point of view. And through our program, we're actually allowing learners to be placed into university institutions, but we're looking at it from a long-term point of view to how do we then place those learners into internships, into graduate programs to then become the future leaders of tomorrow. How do you get involved with us? Um, we're really looking at corporates coming on board as implementation partners, whether it's using employees and the organizations as mentors to come and guide in the different careers. We're really looking at building um, the careers of the future, making learners aware of the careers that are out there, whether it's your data science, whether it's in the fintech industry, whether it's in the FMCG industry. Those are what we're really trying to expose the learners to. We're also looking at bringing on employees from organizations as as volunteers like yourselves on, on this call and, and judges as well. So when the learners finish their impact projects uh, using the sustainable development goals, they then take these projects and pitch them to organizations. We then teach them to build prototypes and business models, and we're actually trying to take those models to market. And what an amazing journey it would be to have young learners in high schools become young entrepreneurs um, that are able to then send create a profit margin for themselves to help their families and their loved ones. Um, so at Young Aspiring Thinkers, we've, we've gone through a lovely journey with international collaborations. Uh, we joined the Change Now Summit last year. Um, it's a pity that it's online, but I think it's been as, as fun as well. Um, we've also worked with uh, Monster Business School that has helped us with the online content. And we've also joined the um, Impact Project from the United States that has helped us reach undergraduate students and MBA students who have come on board to help us with solutions to improve the journey. Um, if you would like to partner with us, it would really be amazing and it would be nice to see increase our reach even though we're in South Africa. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nema. To also remind us that the young learners are actually our future leaders. So fantastic presentation. 
We're now going to go into q and I'm going to invite all the jury members to ask questions to our wonderful presenters. Who would like to go first? I can start. Uh, maybe it's like the, the very basic question when, when we, we see startups going to like, you know, AI translations, the fact that, you know, how can you protect for company, bigger companies like Google and others or Microsoft coming and doing the same translation as you? Uh, my question is like for Adam from Lesan. Yeah. Um, so how does, how does Google not maybe do what we do? Um, so the way typical um, data sets are built are, is these large companies like Google or Facebook will scrape the web. Um, we're looking at different websites, like uh, I think the parliament in the UN uh, or has like many languages that have to translate exactly the same, and those are online. And they'll, they'll leverage those kind of translations. And what we have done is set up a team in Ethiopia, which is different than those other players. And that, you know, we have many annotators and translators on the ground in Addis Ababa, for example, um, annotating translations, creating translations with different customers. Um, we really have like an on-ground presence. We do mm -hmm. still leverage all the stuff that's online, but that on-ground presence is what's really different from the larger kind of players. And we think they're just poorly positioned in California to kind of solve the problems that are um, on the ground in these regions. For sure. For sure. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah, yes. this is Daniel. Or sorry, go go ahead. Go ahead, it's fine. Um, so for uh, young, inspiring thinkers, I thought it was a, a fascinating uh, presentation. Really, really enjoyed it. Um, comparing that to you know perhaps Adam solution, where you can easily see the the scale, um, you know that that can be had with technology. Um, you know, impacting lots of people. I'm curious if, if you can speak to, um, you know, where, where your uh, solution requires much more personal interaction, um, how you would scale that to impact as many youth as possible in South Africa. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the question. What we're currently actually working on, we have a project with an organization here at home and we're currently facilitating about um, 500 learners um, who are currently in high school. And I think COVID has really taught us to, to really challenge how, how do we scale this kind of approach, um, taking into consideration the safety aspects. And I think we've come up with um, cool ways for mentors to come into the Illuminate program, as we call it, as mentors. Um, mentors across the scope are actually doing what we five-minute videos explaining their careers, explaining their journey, and really being honest about their dislikes and likes about where, where they are currently. And I think through these videos, we've been able to play that um, simultaneously in different classrooms, adhering to social distancing. And I think that's what has helped us scale. I think what the missing link is to really run this program in the different provinces at home um, at the same time. So currently, we're working in Johannesburg, I've worked in Durban, I've worked in Pretoria, I've worked in Limpopo, and what we really want to do is to scale that to the other provinces because we've seen a genuine improvement in learners' critical thinking skills, their leadership capabilities through this program. And I think we'd be doing ourselves a very big disservice if we didn't scale this. Um, so we really are trying to get uh, corporates involved, whether it's funding laptops, whether it's funding cell phones for learners to be engaged, Currently, what we're using in-house in, in the classrooms is, you know, projectors in the different classrooms to then show those mentor videos. Um, and I think more long term is to really develop tech labs at the schools. So there's a really poor um, access in terms of technology at the high schools that we work in. And I think what we want to do five um, within the next five years is really build those tech labs at the school and have those programs running simultaneously. I hope I answered your question. Yeah, no, thank you. Thanks. Wonderful. I think that we have time for one more question. And Judy Lore, you had a question, I believe. Yes, yeah, so I had a question for uh, Benoit. Uh, I think the, um, the project and the idea is very interesting. Uh, and we know that uh, young adults with, who are too old to be uh, protected as children and too young to uh, 
be completely independent in life. Um, I mean, it, it's a very um, risky uh, time in life. But um, as an investment uh, fund, we always focus on the uh, revenue streams. Uh, so I was wondering, um, what what revenue streams do you think will be? Um, would you do in your project? I'm not. I'm not sure if uh, if it's a project or if it's actually um, a company. So. Um Nowadays, it's a project, it's a, a charity. Uh, we are thinking about um, creating a company because we have different revenue stream. So the idea is, is that we have the capacity to raise funds in order to finance our young adults. And uh, we want people to uh, remunerate the fact that we are able to do this. Uh, one way is uh, to uh, develop corporate partnership because uh, next to the financial aid, we have also a social link program, which is there in order to uh, create social bondings and connections between young adults who doesn't have the habit to exchange between one another. So the idea is to propose to to give this uh, project to big corporations in order to engage their young employees and to give them some sense because the fact of um, of being in a close relationship with a young adult who suffer from uh, a lack of family support who has a big experience uh, is very very uh, motivating and so the idea is to get. Uh, this partnership uh, incoming, we have a, a few uh, few companies who are interested. Great, thank you so much. Unfortunately, this marks the end of our session, but not in terms of connecting. I am sure a lot of you have plenty of more questions, so go to the link in the chat where you can continue networking and getting to know each other and learn much more about each other's invent, uh, ventures. So I just want to thank all of you changemakers, jury member and massacre for your dedication to inclusion, such important work. And thank you all of you who've been tuning in from all around the world. I hope you leave this session more inspired and ready for change now. Have a great day. Bye.